Buckle up, drink tankers, because this is where the rubber meets the road. And today we are talking about blends. Why do winemakers blend different grapes? Is it like a recipe that brings out more than the sum of its parts? Yes, more or less. Here's what happens when different grape varieties are brought together to chant in harmony like a boy band jacked up on uranium. Let's saddle up and ride. The first thing you look for with a blend is balance. One grape variety on its own is fine, but if you mix them together, you're looking for the holy trilogy of acidity, structure, and flavor. When you taste a wine, you want all those elements to be in the same ballpark. If one thing sticks out, that's not a balanced wine, and that's not good quality. But where do we go to look for our blends? Well, the first place you could look is Bordeaux. Bordeaux is a region in France, and it produces very famous wines, Chateau Latour, Lafitte Rothschild, and so forth. Now, they're blends of different grape varieties. Now, in Bordeaux, the headline grape varieties are Cabernet Sauvignon, Black Currenty, and Merlot, soft and plummy. Now, there's two different places in Bordeaux with different emphasis, the left bank of the river and the right bank of the river. The left bank of the river tends to concentrate on Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, and the right bank, a bit more Merlot dominated. But you can find other great varieties in there. Petit Verdo, Carmenere, Malbec, Cabernet Franc, all of those romping around in a glass on the quest for excellence. Chateau Neuf de Pape, that is another very famous place, and that produces a red wine that's blended from 13 different grape varieties. Get in there. Champagne is a blend, I bet you've never really thought of that, but it's a blend of three grape varieties. Two red ones, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, and one white one, Chardonnay. There are some bonkers blends coming out from new countries like Australia, which pioneered the Cabernet Shiraz blend, an awesome red blend that has a huge legion of followers, and New Zealand, which is creating some astonishingly inventive white blends. I recently tasted a sensational New Zealand blend of, check this out, Pinot Gris, Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Gewurztraminer. And that felt like Spider-Man, Superman, Iron Man, and Batman playing in a super-powered string quartet. Genius. Another super famous place that makes red wines from blends is Rioja in Spain. Now, Rioja is a world in itself. The reds are blended from these grapes. Tempranillo, it's soft yet structured and strawberry-ish. Garnacha adds a dose of hoof, spice, booze. Mathuelo adds color and weight, and Graciano adds finesse, bright fruit, and elegance. Generally speaking, if it says guarantee of origin on the label, it can be red, white, or rosé, and it'll be young and fruity. If you see Criantha on the label and it's a red wine, it'll have two years at the winery before it's released, with at least one year in oak casks. It's juicy. If you see Reserva on your bottle of Red Rioja, that's been aged for three years between barrel and bottle, and that has concentration, color, and character. If you see Gran Reserva on the bottle, only in the best years is that made from the finest grapes, and it takes five years to get it out of the winery. Two years in oak casks and three in bottle. It's savory, and it's aged before it reaches you. It's ready to drink, and it's world class. Blends! It's like a drinks party where all the guests are jiggling up close and personal in your very own jacuzzi. Whoa, I'm double dipping. Cheers! Yeah. Drink tank policies. If you're looking for a classy blend, you could look to Bordeaux from France or Chateauneuf de Pape, or if you're feeling flush, a glass of champagne. If you're looking for bonkers blends, look to Australia, look to New Zealand. And if you're looking for a classic world within a world, look to the Spanish region of Rioja. Unleash the blends!